gap standing for Jesus Standing in the gap for family and friends Standing in the gap One love for all So we all can make it in This study and um you know, one thing that, that um, we like, we want to do with this ministry is to make sure that we um, keep you informed of current events as it relates to the subjects that we uh, teach, the Constitution and the Bible being what we're teaching this time. And um, as a result, we have instituted a, a, a segment that we call the Gap News, the Gap News. And um, I've asked Marvel to be in charge of that. And um, uh, she brings out current issues and things that we need to think about as we uh, proceed down and stand in the gap. And so I'm going to turn it over to Marvel. Marvel, what you got? Well, we're talking about guns. We have so much gun violence. My goodness gracious, it's up over 200, I think it's like 220 mass shootings already in America this year. So we're going to just take a look and see what they have to say about it. A little boy left without parents and his brother, now among the heartbreaking stories we are learning from the victims killed in Saturday's mass shooting at a Texas outlet mall. Three-year-old James and his parents, Korean-Americans Gyu Sung Cho, Shin Young Kang, were gunned down. Six-year-old William survived, that according to a GoFundMe post written by family friends. Also lost two sisters, Daniela and Sofia Mendoza, in fourth and second grade. Their elementary school principal described them as two, quote, rays of sunshine. Their mother is in critical condition. 20-year-old mall security guard, Christian LaCour, 27-year-old engineer, Aishwara Tatikonda, and 32-year-old Elio Kumana Rivas, all dead. All killed by a hateful gunman. We're learning he made disturbing social media posts fixated on Nazi ideology, guns, and mass shootings. Let's go live to see us. Josh Campbell. He is at the scene in Allen, Texas with the latest. Josh, what are we learning? Yeah, John, so a law enforcement source had previously told me that investigators had uncovered this really troubling online presence from the shooter uh, where he's talking about white supremacy, he's talking about Nazis. We're now seeing some of those images for ourselves. CNN has uh, identified a site, a Russian social media platform where this shooter had an account, and his account is just replete with all kinds of vile material about Nazis, about white supremacy. Again, his obsession over firearms, his obsession uh, over past mass shootings and essentially looking to those and discussing uh, those types of attacks. He obviously is accused of coming here uh, this weekend and killing eight people at this mall in Allen, Texas. Now, he also describes himself, John, as an incel, which is, uh, for those who, who don't follow extremism, it's essentially a, a, a man who blames women and society for his lack of romantic uh, uh, success. We're also learning chilling new details, and I'll show you some of the photos from this account. It appears as though he had conducted attack reconnaissance here prior to this attack. You see a photo from the parking lot. You see him researching on Google Maps. What are the busiest times of day out the, at this outlet mall? Truly troubling stuff. Finally, John, I'm learning new information about the firearms that this suspect had. A law enforcement source tells me that uh, authorities recovered multiple firearms, including that AR-15 that he used in conducting this massacre. I'm told that all of those firearms were purchased legally, most of them from private sellers. The reason why that's so important, and we often hear people after these mass shootings say, well, let's not talk about politics, let's not politicize that. Politics obviously drives policy, and here in the state of Texas, if you buy a gun from a private seller, you don't have to go through a federal background check. John? Josh Campbell live on the scene for us. Very important reporting. Josh, thank you. Let's get some important insights now from the former FBI Deputy Director, Andrew McCabe. So you just heard Josh go through that. Uh, number one, uh, the military said goodbye to this gentleman because yes. of some mental health issues. Uh, he's buying guns. He's posting on these Russian websites. I want to come back to the Russian part of that in a minute. Sure. But so there's a lot of dots out there. Uh, but Texas has no red flag law. There's no background check if you buy from a private seller. So was there any way, in your view, to connect them? Or in the world he was living in, 
Is this what happens? Very, very hard to connect them, right? So even if he had tried to purchase a gun through a federally licensed firearms dealer, unlikely that his past uh, emotional uh, troubles would have been an obstacle to that because you have to be adjudicated a mental defective or have been committed to an institution for that to be a disqualifier. So this is just a very, very familiar, time-worn story of another alienated, isolated, angry young man gravitates towards these communities of these extremist communities, extremist ideologies as a way of seeking a tribe, seeking a community, uh, seeking that sort of affirmation for his own anger and his own beliefs, and then carefully planning out this massacre and executing it in the most lethal way. I am not going to defend American technology companies because there's a lot of hate on those sure. sites as well, but this is not the first time these Russian sites have come up after something like this, uh, where you do have the neo-Nazism, misogyny, uh, talking about guns, talking about the glory of mass killings, yeah. if you will. Uh, we defend the First Amendment here uh, to do. the end, obviously. Is there anything that can be done because it's uh, these foreign sites, anything in the law or a law that could, that could help wall that off? Not currently. There isn't really a, a, a First Amendment consistent way of excluding people from seeing these sites. And they are just as you've described. It is truly the Wild West, right? There's no content moderation. It is just uh, whatever you want to post. It kind of attracts that sort of extremist um, communication and uh, community for that reason. And so we are at 208 mass shootings. It's May. Uh, 208 mass shootings in the United States so far in 2023. I want you to listen here. This is Michael Chitwood. He's the sheriff in Volusia County, Florida, who says, yep, it's Texas this week. It's been Florida before. It'll be somewhere else next week. He says there are some things that keep happening, some recurring themes. It's the same thing over and over again. It's this indoctrination on these far extreme chat rooms. It's mental illness, the access to firearms, this, agree this grievance against Jews, women, people of color. This was a well-planned attack, as was Nashville, as was the supermarket in, uh, in Buffalo. You know, they scout the area. They're looking for a high body count. They know the type of people they're looking to eradicate from the world. Um, every sheriff has become an expert in this uh, be just because it keeps happening. Uh, Chitwood says, Sheriff Chetwood says, his department has used Florida's red flag law more than 200 times since it passed. Texas does not have one. Does that make a difference? It makes a difference at the margins, but let's go right at what the problem is. There is only one thing that makes us different than every other country that experiences mental health problems. Uh, they have angry people, people with grievances. The difference here is that when you're in that category, you can also become incredibly heavily armed with the most lethal military weapons that are available instantly. That is why we experience gun violence at a rate far off the charts from any comparable nation. Because they won't have a conversation about assault-style weapons and right. large magazines. Right. What do you think about that? This one story touches on all the things that are wrong. The guns, the mental illness, the extremism, and hatred. You know, it does. I mean, it's um, and those it's really children. hard to it's really hard to uh, listen to those when not have and not having some type of emotion about it. The um, you know, I think the day is the anniversary, one year anniversary, I think, of the uh, shooting up in Buffalo at the supermarket. Oh yes, it is. And you know that that was uh, targeted against black people. Um, and that's not the only one. We're going to get in some things because